welcome to the course of uh, Future Trends and Corporate and Marketing Communications. And this is our introductory webinar. First of all, uh, it's a great pleasure to have you here in this program. Uh, we are uh, totally glad to have a great variety of students from different backgrounds. We are confident that this colorful composition will significantly contribute to the performance of the program as well as yours. We have prepared this four-week program course program with my colleagues Pınar Aslan, Istok Sila and Marina Tuneva. First, I will introduce myself and explain the general outline of this course uh, as well as the main details of the first week that I'm in charge of. Uh, let me introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Seda Mengü. I have been working in Istanbul University for 18 years in public relations department as an academician. I'm currently a lecturer in uh, PR at the Faculty of Communication and I give lessons to undergraduate, master and doctorate students. My main courses are corporate communication management, advertising theories, PR practices, my research interests focus on strategic corporate communication, cultural policies and PR, and corporate storytelling and gender studies. And now I'm going to give information about the course. This course aims at providing a compact outline of contemporary topics closely related to the communicative and marketing related aspects of today's business. Generally, our course is about learning the essentials of corporate communications through profit and non-profit organizations, firms, governmental and non-governmental organizations. We propose uh, the concept of corporate communications as an integrative communication structure linking stakeholders to the organization. A corporate communication structure describes a vision of the ways in which an organization can strategically orchestrate all types of communication. Corporate communication encompasses marketing communications, organizational communications, and management communications. Therefore, a coherent approach to the development of communications in organizations, which a communication specialist can centrally coordinate organization strategically. At the webinar, you will learn uh, the main characteristics of the future target groups, the new marketing environments, uh, issues management and uh, social media, corporate culture and identity, online crisis management, and uh, new investor relations in the new era. And third will, uh, and second week, Pınar Aslan will be with you in context with digital public relations, managing digital issues, crisis in digital world, and third week, will be held by Istok Silla in context with new trends in marketing communications. You will focus on integrated marketing communication from strategic to tactical perspectives, considering the digital era. Also, the importance of a changing environment and consumer habits will be mentioned. And the last week of our course, you will be with uh, Marina Tuneva. Uh, her subject is ethical decision making and corporate social responsibility. In this uh, context, you will learn ethical decision making and sustainability overview and perspectives and basis of corporate social responsibility, emerging trends and uh, future corporate social responsibility and leadership tasks and functions. You will be given uh, your team assignments by the lecturers and be graded over 25 points. Uh, so please stick to the deadlines carefully. And uh, for for our guest uh, lecturer, uh, Hakan Sandir, he is a brand consultant, and he is going to give you less, his lesson uh, to you in on fifth of October. And at the webinar, at his webinar, you will learn the main characteristics of the future target groups, new marketing environments, emerging branding strategies, and also you will have an idea about preparing brand strategies. 
Now I'm going to mention the skills to develop for uh, with these courses. In this course, in week one, we aim that you will develop general subject specific competencies in the following areas. To know about the future trends of corporate communications, marketing and ethics. To think and plan strategically about corporations regarding the digital world. To understand the analytical approach for sustainable organizational goals. Understand the need for innovative approaches to reach efficient and effective communication of the company. Understand the role of mass media and social networks. You will know the uh, you know you will know about future techniques of marketing communications. Uh, you're going to uh, describe you can describe how ethical perspectives guide decision making processes, and you will learn to analyze and summarize important issues around corporate social responsibility. Uh, and the link between reputation and corporate social responsibility. Uh, about workflow, webinars and assignments, we can say uh, in week one, generally, we are going to talk about future trends of corporate communication. In week three, in week two, digital public relations, managing digital issues, crisis in digital world. In week three, new trends in marketing communications. And in week four, uh, by Marina Tuneva, ethical decision and making and corporate uh, social responsibility subjects will be held. Uh, each week, a webinar takes place. Summary or an outline uh, of the principal topics relevant to the respective week's uh, main theme. And uh, then you will proceed by studying the details by using the given materials. And you will find the materials on, on LMS as case studies, videos, YouTube videos, and uh, other book chapters or articles. You can benefit from all that materials while you're uh, preparing your assignments. And the assignments for assignments uh, will be graded by each of the lecturers and uh, 25 points will be given to every student. And we'll be, when we look at the assignments, and as I said before, four assignments, one assignment for each week, all for, uh, for all weeks, uh, it will be teamwork. You, you will uh, do your uh, homeworks or assignments by your teams in your groups. And each team will be uh, included in six persons. Teams will remain the same uh, during the entire of the course. They won't change. But some groups uh, will be uh, eight or nine person. It can change. And each assignment has a specified length, specified number of words. Please respect the rules related to it. That means that the document shouldn't be less than the specified length. Each paper should be written in Times New Roman, 12 points and single spacing. Please always write down your names and team names on the front page of your papers and always provide a list of the references where relevant at the end of your paper by saying references I mean all resources and literatures that you used preparing the paper. Uh, no final project at the end of this course. There will be no final project. There, there will be only four assignments. Uh, so every lecturer will evaluate you on these assignments. We will announce all grades at the end of the course. Uh, and we will give you the exact time later. These assignments are intended to check whether you have understood well all the topics and are able to figure out connections among the topics of this course. Also, they will help you uh, find out how much you become or feel yourself familiar with the topic. So attach utmost importance to them. Uh, you have to be, uh, be careful and meticulous uh, reading and work. Our expectations are so simple. We really appreciate if you respect the deadlines in case you have some unwanted obstacles, we are always here to help you and guide you. During the most of the course, you will work in groups. I expect you to respect your group mates. Uh, 
At the end of the course, you will, uh, you will evaluate your group members. Please be honest with your remarks on others. Preparing your assignments, we expect you to get to the point and not give unnecessary information. And of course, you'd better be honest that you did your assignments with your own words. Please don't, do not copy, uh, copy paste the content. And now uh, we can talk about uh, week one. A short but profound look at the digitalized concepts of corporate communication issues. Digital corporate communication, online reputation, issues management and social media, uh, besides corporate culture and uh, identity, online crisis management. We are going to talk about uh, these uh, subjects. The major concepts of this subject are identity, image, corporate philosophy, vision, culture, and new target groups, and their strategic, uh, strategic alignments for the corporate aims. The communication profession and business is at large of an implementation-oriented nature, whereas the communication function in an organization has, to, uh, has a lot to contribute to overall strategy formulation. Corporate communication is generally understood as the communication process of the corporate identity. To do so, communicators and workforce likely to manage communicative processes of identity in digital ways should enhance their strategic thinking on the new target groups and new environments as well. This is one of the drivers to consider when we design the content of this week. All reading materials and videos are given on LMS. Some topics uh, are, what is the difference between brand and reputation, from issues to crisis management and future public opinion and how it is shaped, for example. Now, uh, as we look at the assignment, the question is for week one, find a corporation having a particular brand value and image in the market, and as a result of some reasons, you can find your reasons by yourself, its reputation is decreasing. It may have experienced a crisis. You can define the problem by yourselves. For the purpose of reviving the reputation of this corporation, please indicate what kind of corporate communication method with a strategic perspective through integrative media should be used by using all the concepts you have learned or you will learn so far. Write your assignments in word format with thousand words. It could be a real company suffering loss of reputation or a crisis. Please consider carefully the conceptions and terminology that you learned reading the textbook uh, chapters or articles uh, about uh, digital corporate communication strategy. Uh, Anita, it will be 25 points for uh, by every lecture, but you are going to take uh, extra points uh, from your participations because uh, so it is important to participate to lessons directly. So assignment uh, assignment one is in the, no assignment one. All the assignments for this course, for week, for four week courses, uh, our teamworks will be uh, will be done in groups. Okay. Uh, the deadline uh, to complete the assignment uh, is. Uh, Twenty. 23.59 hours. Saturday, uh, 7th October, 7th of October. Please submit your papers on the forum below that time, below by that time. And please remember that the assignment uh, first share in the final grade will be 25, as I said before. And it's time to work with teams. Each team will be uh, six to nine or 11 members. Some, uh, some groups will be crowds. 
Uh, you can see the uh, team members uh, in LMS. You can find them there. And uh, now talk about a little bit corporate, digital corporate communications and some concepts about this. Uh, what is new environment? New environment is an important point in digital corporate communications. Uh, the business of managing relationships and therefore business itself has changed dramatically in the last decade. Stakeholder empowerment has shifted the corporate hierarchy of influence from the hands of elite business executives to those of their once passive audiences, including employees, consumers, media and investors. The complex modern business environment driven by these individual stakeholders' needs, wants, opinions and whims underscores the harsh reality for corporate leaders. They have all but relinquished control over their organization's reputations and messaging to a dissonant public. Whether you are a corporate leader or a self-described member of said public, this reality affects almost every interaction you will have with the institution of business. While this evolution, some would say revolution, in business didn't happen overnight. It was prompted by a juggernaut of catalysts that emerged and spread so rapidly that many executives were left without any strategies for thriving let alone surviving in this new environment. This is call of prayer. Uh, sorry for the noise, but uh, our religion... Uh, <laughs> and it, it's come from, it comes from mosques. The time, it's time to pray now in Turkey. <laughs> Let's pray for our course all together. Uh, and and uh, again, uh, back. and before the digital explosion at the turn of the 21st century, corporations' reputations were shaped by one dimensional messaging that the senior most managers pushed down the corporate ladder and disseminated to stakeholders separately and without discussion. As summarized by the two, uh, 2007 Authentic Enterprise CEO report, commissioned by the author Safe Page Society, companies used to control their identities, value propositions, and the content of the messages about themselves. Companies used to segment, segment or target audiences Companies used to have distinct expertise in and control over the channels of communication. The report's use of past tense is indicative of the seismic shift that occurred to empower target audiences, otherwise known as stakeholders. A stakeholder is any individual or group that can affect and be affected by the actions of a corporation. Universally, the most common and influential stakeholders include employees, customers, as you know, media, investors, community members, analysts, non-governmental organizations, lobbyists, and activist groups. In the past, these stakeholders had limited interactions with corporate entities. Messages were created by executives to meet the needs of a specific group, and that group received these messages with limited means for commentary or reaction. Now, an ever-growing list of interactive digi digital platforms, all of which reside beneath the umbrella of Web2, gives stakeholders the ability to communicate with one another, to build communities around shared interests, to disseminate their own messaging about an organization, and ultimately, to threaten companies' increasingly vulnerable reputations. Corporate executives still create and disseminate messaging and stakeholders, but these individuals and groups are now empowered to talk back through digital channels. Perhaps more intimidating, intimidating, they can converse with one another, comparing notes, so to speak, and interpreting corporate information in their own way, which may or may not be accurate. This uneasy reality requires business leaders worldwide to redefine their strategies, 
and brands in the context of digital communications platforms and the power these platforms grant to stakeholders. Control of messaging and reputation may seem all but lost, but executives are in an authority in a position to emerge from the cyber jungle with renewed authority and influence. First, however, they must learn to harness the power of digital communications by integrating these platforms into all business strategies and applying them across every business function. Is the webinar attendance graded? Yes, it will be graded. The webinar attendances will be graded. Uh, for starters, corporate reputations have become extremely vulnerable in the wake of scandals that rattled the public's trust in business. While corporate maleficence was by no means unheard uh, of in the 20th century, scandals became ubiquitous in recent years. Beginning most notably in 2001 with the infamous dissolution of energy company Enron after a series of fraudulent accounting procedures became public. As Argentian Barnes mentioned from that point on, one could argue that the situation went from bad to worse. Trust in business institutions plummeted with only 44% of population saying they trusted business to do the right thing. Likewise, by February 2002, approximately 81% of surveyed investors didn't have much confidence in those running big business. These green statistics set the tone for what would become a common theme for corporate leaders. Their credibility, along with their organization's reputations, was declining in the face of increased, increased scrutiny by every stakeholder group, be it consumers, investors, or even employees. The 2008 Edelman Trust Barometer revealed that Globally, only 51% of respondents made up primarily of elites trust businesses to do what's right thing. Corporate communication is, first of all, for emerging trust. The first role of corporate communication is building trust. Corporate leaders begin to change their business models in the way. They have several reasons for that. First of all, expansion of emerging markets emergence of new technology, changing customers' needs, buying habits, greater competition, regularity changes, and greater competition, new competitors have emerged. Times are changing, and a number of instigators, digital platforms, media fragmentation, and stakeholder empowerment are proving to expedite the integration between marketing and communications in many organizations. According to Weiner, the emergence of digital communication platforms is as reflective of the situation as it has always been, except that there is fresh meat on the table and there is a battle over who is to be served. The corporate communication function is well positioned to become executive chef in this, uh, chef in this proverbial situation based in this natural propensity. Now blogs, social media outlets and online communities have empowered anyone to act as a journalist of sorts, hence the term citizen journalism, and to engage various audiences in conversations that have acute, acute effects of the, uh, on the reputations of companies as online interaction media become more prominent. In fact, uh, the general public's opinion of the most essential medium changed radically. Corporate communication is also about corporate culture and how decisions are made. Uh, the corporate strategy, corporate culture is the uh, very most important concept in corporate communication strategy. The corporate strategy of a company determines its corporate culture. The major components of corporate culture is, are values. These values can influence the motivation of individual employees, which determines success or failure of the internal management system of the company. There are both micro and micro 
macro perspectives that affect this value creation process. At the macro level, the production function is affected by not only the tangible elements of production, but also the value creation process building corporate culture of the companies within the industry. At the micro, micro level, the values creation process can be divided into three groups. First, the employees try to satisfy their own egos in the context of their ideology, whether they carry that ideology from their national culture or it's from their own experience. Second, the employees try to improve their working and living environment. Third, the employees care about the interest of the community of their co-workers. The third type of the value creation is at the highest level of cognition, which is already uh, embodied in human psychology. It creates cooperative tendencies, which needs to be cultivated in an appropriate environment by the development of corporate culture. Employees gain self-respect if an organization demonstrates continuous progress. That may create a social environment that promotes harmony and long-term success for the organization. Corporate culture is defined as the behavior of the organization and its structure. It is rooted in an organization's goals, strategies and structure, and its approaches to labor, customers, investors, and greater community. As such, corporate culture is an essential component of the organization. The psychological view of corporate culture is a combination of ideas, habits, impulses, and the way of life reflecting personal preferences. Research has shown that human beings develop a sense of self that is a combination of beliefs, feelings, and knowledge, which is used to evaluate, organize, and regulate their intellectual, emotional, and behavioral reactions to the physical and social environment. Major values of corporate uh, culture are innovation, stability, respect for people, outcome orientation, detail orientation, team orientation, and aggressiveness or determination. These values are related to the four types of corporate culture. You can find all the uh, knowledge and all the information about detailed information uh, in, in articles. Uh, and what are these four types of corporate culture? Leadership, which are clan, autocracy, hierarchy, and market. Competitive advantages of firms can be created by a number of instruments. Organizational culture is the most important one. Corporate culture is perceived as the combination of three subsystems from the perspective of value components. Macro value systems, meso value systems, and micro uh, value systems. The first subsystem of culture, the macro value subsystem or national culture, consists of basic values, religious, moral, and habitual, that are common to a particular nation. The second subsystem of culture, the meso value subsystem, or organizational culture, embodies the myths, beliefs, and ideologies of the organization. Finally, the third subsystem of culture is micro value subsystem, or individual culture comprises the values that belong to individuals within the organization who contribute their unique experiences, beliefs, goals, and personalities. Uh, you can read and search uh, more detailed information about the corporate culture and uh, the relationship in uh, between uh, reputation management in LMS, uh, you can read the materials on LMS. And uh, when we, as we look at the reputation management, uh, Andrew Griffin provides a comprehensive approach to managing situations that are fraught with risk uh, and which may turn into crisis. Unfortunately, not all crises can be envisaged and not all issues can be prevented from becoming crises. So he also covers in detail how to manage when that happens. His basic position is this. Reputations cannot be managed, but behaviors can. 
To quote him, a good reputation comes from living your values, delivering for customers, making good decisions, meeting and exceeding performance standards, and demonstrating good behaviors across the organization. It is showing, not telling. So reputation, reputation management begins from the inside, not in the corporate communication department. However, it is usually that department that is responsible for building relationships with stakeholders and being in regular dialogue with them. They are the barriers of the corporate narrative, but more importantly, they are the organizational antenna, ever in dialogue and listening and ever alert to danger signs. And it is in building relationships of trust at, that the organization builds a level of protection for itself when things go wrong. They are more likely to be believed. They will have others speaking in their defense and they will have a history of integrity behind them. Managing risks to reputation places a particular strain on communication function because such risks have the potential to play out very publicly. Everything the organization is doing and saying in response to the challenge facing them is being watched and judged by those who determine reputation and then make choices based on it. As a primary link between the organization, its stakeholders and the general public, communicators must respond well. Communications professionals are not only there to advise on delivery, but also on strategy. They need to bring the outside world into decision making, help scenario plan and identify risks in the short and long term, advise on how different courses of action will be perceived and participate in making decisions that will have reputational impacts. Whether you are an individual or a multinational company, your reputation is not something that you own. It is something that is assigned to you by others. Furthermore, whilst there may be many different views about you and your various qualities and abilities, those others are acting as a group. You hear people saying, for instance, I know they've got a reputation for poor customer service but I was extremely pleased with what I, uh, what, how they treated me. This is a dissenting opinion to a group verdict. You can have different reputations amongst different groups. However, for example, a company might have a reputation for good customer service in one market, but not in another. It is also important to understand the distinction between reputation and brand. The two are often confused. Brand is a differentiation differentiator. <laughs> a company actively projects its brands as promises and aspirations uh, for its customer base to buy into, except a reputation is not actively projected. It is earned. It is about acceptability and legitimacy to a much wider audience. Companies uh, can have strong brands, but weak reputations and vice versa. And for future of reputation management, uh, what can we say? There are some things to do for managing future, reputa future uh, reputation management. First of all, uh, ending the unproductive subordination of reputation to brand issues in crisis or threat environments. Secondly, Understanding the uses and limitations of corporate social responsibility and applying them to reputation rather than brand needs. Thirdly, accepting the risk of delegating more reputation responsibilities to volatile external audiences. And uh, the other one is ensuring that corporate oversight adapts to these changes and is marked by extensive strategic, tactical, political, social understanding of communications. And not merely through narrow knowledge of technologies and professional functions. Reputation management must adapt to instability. Sometimes companies originate and harness the communication avalanche themselves. We, can, we have seen that the body shop largely picks its own reputation, shaping issues Thanks to inherent radicalism, apparent transparency, a careful choice of words and phrases, 
and the uh, ju judicious selection of five worthy activist teams. Sometimes a company is trapped in the path of another's avalanche. Many serious reputation shaping issues have descended on Shell, but the company Shell has decided to work at being a credible and trusted participant in all of them. A chief communication officer would in future define success by an ability to meet online corporate reputation needs in times of crisis and call. These needs will include auditing internal and external issues affecting corporate reputation, both risks and opportunities, understanding the connections between social challenges and corporate reputation, defining particular tone and technologies to be used for selected issues and audiences, developing appropriate techniques, techniques to develop conversation, information distribution and transparency perceptions with key influencers, particularly those online, preparing crisis plans and procedures with online response capabilities, including selection and training of appropriate online spokespersons for specific target audiences, identifying and opening relations with influentials defined by key regions, expertise or industry knowledge, ensuring that brand vision, marketing, corporate social responsibility, human resources and other corporate communication activities interlock with all reputation enhancement needs. And then we'll look at the crisis and issues management. Uh, we can say online corporate reputation needs in times of crisis and call. These needs will include Auditing internal and external issues affecting corporate reputation, both risks and opportunities. And one, two, uh, crisis management and issues management have persisted, perhaps because of how they emerged and developed within many organizations. Crisis management as a discipline developed from an incident management or issues management, we can say. Emergency response and business continuity and therefore traditionally set in the more operational part of an organization. Issues management was born more in corporate affairs and communication departments. Whilst crisis management has in many organizations moved into corporate affairs, sometimes the terminology has not kept up. Some of those organizations that evolved their crisis management capabilities from their incident management capabilities have failed along the way to emerge, to demerge the two and bring slow burn or rising tight crisis into their planning. A crisis in this definition is a situation. A situation could stem from an incident, but equally it might not. The authors distinguish between sudden crisis I mean incidents, and uh, smoldering crises or issues, and suggest that most crises are often the smoldering type. Secondly, a crisis is a big news. A crisis threatens the very core and existence of an organization. By implication, crisis management procedures shouldn't be invoked lightly. Organizations have incidents all the time, but few would qualify as crisis by this definition. Because crises are not synonymous with uh, incidents, the document explains that crisis management is very different from incident management. Crises develop in unpredictable ways. And the response usually requires genuinely creative as opposed to prepared solutions. Griffin's definition of crisis management is making, implementing, and communicating strategic decisions under exceptional circumstances of intense scrutiny, acute pressure, and high organizational risk. It is not the same as incident or issue management, emergence response, or business continuity. All of these operational response capabilities are vital, but crisis management sits above them at the highest strategic level.
So where does that leave issues management? Griffin defines it as the management over time of non-acute risks to an organization's strategic, commercial, and reputational interests, which, if left unresolved or if ignited by a trigger event, could escalate into a crisis. So reputation risks either come from incidents or issues, and either can be or become a crisis. Many crises have arisen from a failure of issues management. While information remains the raw material for the global economy and public opinion one of its major products, technology is changing the constructions, tastes and expressions and the sheer quantity of public opinion. The way firms find and influence that opinion must therefore also change. And executives who have never engaged in opinion management and have no professional knowledge of communication, they cannot escape its tides undertoes and eddies, or their growing role in its formation. Public opinion has always been tapped to build sales and value, awareness and assent. Transparency and interactivity means that in the future, rather than being focused on effectively communicating to the public, PR professionals will become increasingly involved in communicating with the public. Although online publics can go anywhere for material, to form opinions, some of their corporate ports of call still do not know how to interest and accommodate them. What is happening to the public in the future? An organization's usual publics might include, quite possibly, but not always in this rough order of priority, customers, employees, investors, regulators, suppliers, distributors, subcontractors, trade and general media, local communities, sponsored celebrities or theoretically independent minded experts like academics or consultants, activists or industry groups. Within these categories are opinion leaders who help shape the perceptions of the others. Now the scene is changing again. Many publics are reconstituting themselves because of access to information technology, globalization of markets, uh, issues and events, the force of uh, coalescence to group on a massive, perhaps worldwide scale around the product, belief, brand or point of view, the force of fragmentation, the power to, in inact, uh, to act online as an individual, seeking out tiny clusters of like-minded individuals, those interests are limited or highly specialized. These forces feed off an ability to find out more and the power to act on what is found out. At the same time, audiences will continue to be identified by traditional characteristics. What are these characteristics? Shared geographies and social features, common cultural factors such as ethnicity, age, uh, gender, class, religion, and leisure activity, shared vocational or other professional features, mutual economic or political interests, and shared approach uh, to a particular issue or on organization. Uh, but these conventional clusters are tucked in new directions by technology, globalization, fragmentation, and coalescence. The character of some audiences is changed by new online arrivals from other countries and cultures. Other audiences, as we have already seen, are transformed by technology's power to lobby and act. Now the public sphere is entering the limitless spaces opened by the Internet. Knowing where stakeholders and others go to communicate will be as important as knowing what is said when they get there. Corporations will need, need to keep track of the multiplying spaces where public opinion about them is formed and learn new communication rules. At the same time, because of micro-segmenting and message personalization, Many individuals accessing collective spaces with none, nonetheless uh, tend to imagine themselves as autonomous and independent-minded. Whether this is true or not, 
it means that they will certainly be independently empowered. Businesses must identify these new stakeholders, stakeholders and closely engage their free-ranging, time-starved, empowered and overloaded publics. And what is happening to opinion? Even before IT's rise, opinions didn't necessarily become more accurate whenever they arose emotion and felt more personal. Now, uh, now as then, opinions entrench in times of tension and fuel volatility and uh, with escalating emotion. What then is in store for opinion as far as crisis and issues management is concerned? Opinion will be widely distributed and tailored to suit multiple and empowered audiences. It will depend on and exploit IT for this wider influence. It will become more interactive. It will be condensed from detailed and voluminous quantities of information. It will compete with many other opinions to attract stakeholder interests. It will be fed by volatile, instant, unanticipated and time pressured swings of rumor stocked emotion. It will be put more pressure on audience to act fast. By taking concrete shape, it can inflict instant damage on targeted companies. What should business do about it? Intense stakeholder emotions have always filled the opening stages for a crisis or issue. Concern, fear, expectation, anger, hate, trust, anxiety, panic. These feelings are unlikely to be quelled by the effect of IT on public opinion, let alone the knowledge that IT allows critical actions to be taken in the opening stages of disaster. Consequently, many stakeholders, especially those unfamiliar with the threatened company or industry, may grapple with strong emotions in the face of an IT sparked information deluge and will use the technology at their disposal to effectively fan the flames. The public then will seek help online about how to feel and act. In the new public spheres, overflowing with information, general and specialized, permanent or the fleeting product of a particular incident or issue, new systems of trust will form and new trustees of opinion and feeling will come forward. Ben Schneiderman, a scholar of human-computer interaction, concludes, now new social traditions are needed to enhance cooperative behaviors in electronic environments supporting e-commerce, e-services, and online, all the online communities. Trust, Schneiderman argues, must be designed into a online experiences. Certainly, a firm threatened by risk or crisis must participate credibly in the new online models of trust and transparency. Away from the crisis discipline, this activity is touted as an obvious business opportunity. Gartner Research observes online groups and chat sessions between customers and between uh, customers, enterprise employees can be very uh, valuable. Communities can leverage customers' collective knowledge and allow the enterprise to better understand its customers. When it comes to retaining customer loyalty in economic downturns, shared systems of trust, validation, and manifested praise support organic structures that allow community users to interact transparently and productively. Enterprises to report advices must prepare to deal with these new trust systems. These criteria must, can be applied to crisis management in the information age. Intervening in existing trust networks and constructing new, one, uh, new ones raises the prospect of continuous interaction with diverse stakeholders, many marginal to a firm's day-to-day -day fortunes, but with the potential to intervene in a crisis with devastating effect. The right model for business, according to Harvard's uh, Joshana Zwaf might in future lie with distributed capitalism.
in which ownership will be more widely spread and organizations will be as responsive to their employees and communities as they have been in, uh, to their shareholders in the past decade. Now, the passive groups in the future, the passive uh, groups uh, will be the most powerful ones. And I think we have finished. Uh, yes, you. Uh, do you have something? Do you do you want to ask something to me about the this week uh, about the concepts that we have talked about? You can read more detailed information on LMS. You can find uh, more detailed information on in that articles and book chapters. Also, you can uh, uh, watch the videos of specialists. Uh, I want to ask about assignment one. Can you create an imaginary company? Yes, you can create an imaginary company uh, or uh, you can find a real one that have lived uh, such a crisis. Not at all. And do we have any other questions? What is your opinion about this course? What do you expect? What do you expect from this course? Do you have any other expectations? Yes, uh, you can write me any. Um, can we write you an email if you have some? Yes, you can write. And uh, I have uh, my friend and my colleague uh, Fatih Özkoyuncu. You know him uh, from the other courses. Uh, he will be my tutor for this course. And uh, you have, uh, I think, his uh, email address also. You can write me and also to him. Uh, we are going to uh, help you in any way. He will follow my lesson, yes. Strong brands and weak reputations. Strong brands and weak reputations. Do you have some examples? Strong brands and weak reputations. Hmm. Strong brands and weak reputations. Volkswagen, can we say Volkswagen? Uh, I think we can say Volkswagen. From the uh, crisis uh, they have had, uh, as you remember, uh, normally, generally, they have a strong brand. But uh, it's a weak reputation from the, uh, because of the uh, because of the uh, crisis that he lived. Nice to attend your course again, to learn a lot. It's very interesting. Okay, thank you. Vesna, uh, strong brand and bad corporation is established. <laughs> they are not company, but have communication strategy. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, you can use real. Uh, you can uh, you can find a real company. Uh, it may be a governmental, uh, non-governmental organizations, or a firm. It may be a firm or a public institution. It may be a, a, a public institution also, but not a terrorist group. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for your interest, patience, and attendance. If you don't have any other questions, I want to say good evening to you. <laughs> we will uh, go on our communication by email. Thank you. Good evening.